Let's turn now to the latest in the coronavirus pandemic. Now, the CDC is projecting a surge of coronavirus cases through May. Now, we're joined by Dr. Richard Besser. He's the former acting CDC director and the president and CEO of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Doctor, thanks so much for joining us today. I, I want to ask you about that projection from the CDC that there's going to be a surge at least through May. Why, when we're seeing so many adults getting vaccinated right now, are, are the CDC making that type of projection? Well, you know, th this is a model. And what they plug into the model is the re relaxation of a lot of the public health controls, the spread of these variants that are more contagious, uh, easier to go person to person, uh, and the rate of vaccination. And so when I see a model, uh, I don't say it's a crystal ball. I say, what can we do to change that, to have an impact so that we're not seeing a surge, we're seeing numbers going down. And to do that, what we need is for people to follow the recommendations of public health. Uh, and when it's time, and for all adults, that time is now, roll up your sleeves and, and, and get vaccinated. If we do that, uh, I'm not convinced that we will be seeing surges because we are seeing numbers going down in just about every state. Doctor, if what the CDC is projecting is true, if as they look into their crystal ball, should states like, or should cities rather, like New York City, reopen July 1? Mayor de Blasio here saying that he really wants to open the city in a big way uh, at the beginning of July 1st so that it could be back in full swing, you know, by 4th of July. Is that perhaps just too soon? Well, you know, a, a lot depends on on keeping track of uh, of the curves and the rates and and what's happening in each community. You know, while a pandemic is a disease transmission that's taking uh, that, that's occurring all over the globe, it's not occurring at the same rate or pace in, in each place. So uh, Michigan, we'd all been following because the numbers were going up, and now they're coming down. And just about every state, as I mentioned, is is coming down right now. If a state were to see that that changes and that the rate of transmission increases, then you reconsider uh, because the tools that you have to control this are vaccines and the behavior of the population. And both of those are things that you can try and have have an impact on. Doctor, as I was just mentioning, we're seeing more and more adults getting vaccinated right now. President Biden said he wants 70 percent of all American adults to at least have one shot by July 4th. But we're seeing a little bit of hesitancy coming from younger folks, millennials, who, of course, as we've seen throughout this pandemic, have gone to bars and clubs and hung, hung out with their friends. Could they be behind uh, another surge or, or another wave if we do end up seeing one? Yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm here in New Jersey, and we've already achieved that 70% figure for adults 65 and older. But with each group of, of people going down in the uh, age range, you see lower rates of vaccination, some because vaccines were, were just open to them more, more recently. Uh, but when you think about coverage, uh, if, if across the nation where you have 70% coverage, but in some groups, either by age or geography or, or other factors, we're seeing Seeing much higher rates of, of not being vaccinated, we will conti continue to see transmission. And one of the reasons I'm excited about the potential for vaccines in, in children is because vaccinating children will not only protect them, but it will help reduce transmission uh, across the country. Yeah, I want to talk about the children because in their earnings call yesterday, Pfizer said they're going to be looking to the FDA in September for emergency authorization to administer their vaccine to uh, children ages 2 to 11. How important is it to get that population vaccinated and, and can they actually help us attain, attain that herd immunity we keep talking about? Yeah, you know, I, I've stopped talking about herd immunity. I, I think a concept that's that's easier to, to grasp and, and more important is a recognition that, you know, every person who gets vaccinated helps decrease the spread of, of, of COVID around our country uh, and helps protect themselves and their family and their and their their local community. So that's critically important. You know, as a pediatrician and a parent, um, I will be looking very closely at the data around vaccination in children. Um, I think it is a great tool to have. Uh, when you when you look at this past year and the impact on children, uh, it's been dramatic. Uh, and the impact of COVID goes way beyond the number of people who are infected and hospitalized and and, and die. Uh, it's, it's the impact from children who've who've lost family members. The impact on children who haven't been able to go to school. 
And when you look at that impact, it hasn't been spread evenly. Uh, black and brown children in America have, have been hit uh, especially hard, uh, both in terms of their ability to, to go to school and learn in person and their, the, the, the loss in terms of family members and, and direct impact of, of, of infection. So if there are vaccines for children, I think it will provide more opportunity for all children to learn in person. Uh, but again, you want to make sure that the vaccines are safe, that they're effective, and they've been thoroughly reviewed. Uh, doctor, I want to ask you about the variants. Uh, how concerned should we remain, especially now, as Alexis was mentioning, things are opening up and people are traveling more and more. Uh, I was at the airport the other day. I saw flights coming and, and going to Rome uh, and, and to other parts of Italy. How concerned, even with these vaccines, should we be that the variants might be a problem for us in the United States even further on down the road? Well, Kristen, I, I think that variants are, are really important for us to pay attention to. Uh, I'm less concerned by people who are fully vaccinated resuming aspects of their life than I am that people who decide not to get vaccinated are going to continue to allow for transmission in our communities. And every time a virus uh, multiplies and spreads, there's the opportunity for it to mutate. That's what, that's what viruses do. And, and if we have a mutation that means our vaccines are no longer effective, we're back to square one. So another reason why it's so important that every age range gets vaccinated, that every group gets vaccinated, is to reduce the chances that we're going to see variants uh, that we all become susceptible to. Doctor, I'm hoping that you can shed a little light on a debate that's going on right now among people who've been vaccinated. Some people have uh, adverse reactions by adverse, you know, it could be a headache or body aches. It's tough to get out of bed the next 24 to 48 hours after the shot. And others say they just really basically had a sore arm. Um, depending on your reaction to the vaccine, does it mean that it took hold better in one person versus another? Not necessarily. You know, I, I had a very mild reaction. Uh, for some vaccines, I've had a, a, a greater reaction. And when I've had that greater reaction, I've always said to myself, well, maybe that just means my immune system's kicking in better and I'll have better protection. But there's nothing to indicate that someone who has a, a mild reaction or no reaction to the vaccine uh, is not as protected as, as, as somebody else. But if it gives you peace of mind uh, when you're feeling a little uh, crummy after that vaccination, uh, that's OK. Okay, too. I just want to ask, and, you know, just as a general reminder, because I think there's so much confusion still and even misinformation about what life can look like, at least on a more personal level, after you've received that vaccine, both doses, and, and have become fully vaccinated. So just as a reminder for everyone at home, what can your life look like once you've become vaccinated? Can you kind of go back to living life as normal? Can you only go back to living life as normal with other people that have also been fully vaccinated? What can and can't you do? Yeah, you know, the CDC continues to, to change their recommendations, expand the things that people can do. Uh, we got together as a family uh, last weekend for, for the first time, my 91-year-old parents, uh, my brothers and their wives, uh, it was incredible just being able to get together with people who you love without a mask indoors, give each other hugs. That is an, an amazing feeling. The, the mental relief from being fully vaccinated and knowing you're protected. My wife is getting her second dose right now as, as we speak. And we look forward in two weeks to, be able, uh, to being able to, to go out together outdoors without masks on and doing those things we enjoy doing. When you look at the CDC website, they still recommend that for, for most indoor activities uh, in public settings that people wear masks. But over time, as the curves continue to go down and the rates of transmission go down, I expect that there'll be easing of a lot of those guidelines. You know, the guidelines that you see there were put in place when we were still seeing 60, 70,000 cases of COVID every day. Uh, and those numbers are going down markedly. It's below 50,000 now. And if these trends continue, um, I expect we're going to be uh, allowed to do a lot more than we currently can. All right. Do a lot more. I know everyone is very excited to hear that. Dr. Richard Vesser, Robert Wood Johnson Foundation President and CEO, thanks so much for joining us.